as you can see here, what I was stating was, even for myself, I actually have five late payments on here, and the most recent one was a year and seven months. But as you can see, my credit score is a 751. So I would say anything, especially if it's 30 days, it can definitely really impact your credit score because it can take your credit score down pretty quickly. You can see here that right now my utilization is 1%. So that's why I say if you want to increase your credit score fast, you really want to tackle your credit utilization. Here is my Equifax score. And it is, but this is my FICO 9, and it is at an 800. Usually, when I apply for a credit card, I always get approved. So, but usually with Chase, and that's why I was saying with Chase, is usually a little bit, you know, they're, they're going to not necessarily deny me, but I might have to do a reconsideration. So, I want to say it was probably 2020, I believe, when I had applied for the Chase IHG credit card, and they denied me. So one, I believe they did deny me because I had a late payment on there. And then because I had applied for other credit cards around that time, I believe I had applied for three credit cards around that time. But what I did, I called the reconsideration line and they asked me, they just asked me about the late payment. And I told them that I was a co-signer and that that was the reason of the late payments, but we were in a better spot right now. And then that's how I was able to get reconsidered. So that, and then the, when I had applied for the Chase Sapphire Preferred credit card, even though I didn't get approved at first, they had kind of, they didn't deny me, but it's like they reconsidered me without, you know, letting me know. I hope that makes sense. And so basically what they did, they took $5,000 off another one of my credit cards, but they said that the reason that they, I guess, like reconsidered me is because I had already had the Chase Southwest credit card and the Chase IG credit card. But since I wasn't, I had low usage, that's the reason. So really any credit card that I have applied for, even though I have late payments, I haven't had you know, really a hard time. You see what I'm saying? Because I make sure to keep, you know, the other items of my credit report, you know, really good. Now, on the same hand, you know, let's say if you're going to get a house or even because I will say, even when I got my car with Navy Federal, I had late payments on my credit report and my credit score was a 681 at that time. But I was still able to get the lowest interest rate at a 2.19%. And that was in October of 2020. And it didn't hurt me. But I would say the reason why is because I feel like my utilization is really good. And I have a good length of credit as well. And, you know, if they were to ask me, you know, what was going on, then I would just tell them. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, it really hasn't impacted me. So I would say, you know, when we're taking a look at our credit report, we really want to take a look at our overall credit report. And if, let's say you have late payments on there, and then, you know, with HR saying that he had <laughs> sent the CEO, a, you know, a letter to remove them, and you can do disputes if it's accurate, or if it's inaccurate information, then yes, you can do disputes on it. Um, but let's say for myself, since I know that they were accurate late payments, that's why I didn't dispute them. You know, so, um, you know, so you really have to kind of take a look at it, but also look at your overall credit report. And that's usually what I do. But I, I feel like if you want to increase your credit score fast, the quickest way that you can do that is by tackling your credit utilization. Because if you have low credit utilization, like you can increase your credit score like several points. But the only thing is with those late payments, because see, that's going to be 35% of our credit score. That can really take your credit score down pretty quickly. So, you know, I think it is very important for us to make sure that we're paying our bills on time, especially, you know, like within the 30 days, you know, but, um, you know, if something was to happen, you know, like maybe having one, it's not going to kind of in the beginning, it's going to kind of hurt. But, you know, over time, it will, you know, it won't hurt as bad. 
So, you know, cause you can see that even with my credit score, I still have over a 700 and it's saying it's reporting that I have five late payments on there. So, you know, I don't think that that looks good and I don't like that it has it on there, but you know, it actually really happened, you know? And so over here, you can see, this is why I really um, like Experian because it tells you, you know, down here where authorized user accounts aren't considered in the calculation. Wow, that's pretty good. About 98% of FICO high achievers have no miss payments at all, <laughs> of course. But those who do miss, um, but those who do the miss payment happen nearly four years ago on average. So, but you see, since it's been over a year, I would say over a year, really almost two years, I think it impacts you less, but it still reports on there. So, you know, I definitely think it would be great to not have any miss payments on there. So, you know, that's really where we want to be at. Can you pay Discover to remove late payments like negotiated? I pay to have them removed by someone. But I wonder if you could speak to a supervisor. Now, HR, he did state that, where was it? Right here. He did get in contact with the ceo and he wrote a letter and he got them and he was able to get them removed so it's really like how bad do you want it so it's like yes you possibly can get them removed but you want to get them removed the right way because you don't want to get them removed and then they pop back up and then your credit score goes down so i think that's the only reason why i did not have mine removed because i actually know that they were legitimate late payments and so i just try to make sure that for my overall credit report that I'm really trying to, you know, let's say with my credit utilization. And then, cause you know, like with your length of credit, that's only 15% of your credit score. And so that's going to take a little bit, you know, you have to have time, you know, like let's say if you get a credit card, you need time to be able to build a length of credit. And it's only 15% of your credit score. And then, you know, with, new credit, you know, with inquiries, open up credit cards, anything over probably like four or five, it's going to impact you. But, you know, usually if I want to apply for a credit card, you know, I'm going to apply, but you want to really have a strategy, especially if you're wanting to apply for Chase credit cards. And so that's where I would consider, you know, with my inquiries, but, you know, usually you're going to lose maybe like a few points, but if you have a high credit score, I would say anything over 740 or 750, if I lost a couple of points, then it's not going to really impact me that much. It's not a game, sir.